grace and peace to you on this Ash Wednesday evening. Thank you to Anthony for recording some music for us this evening. We are gathered here on a, on a very holy night that begins a holy season for us, the season of the week. I know many of us Protestants may not have grown up with uh, Ash Wednesday or have thought much about Ash Wednesday. In more recent years, uh, more of uh, United Methodist and other Protestant churches have taken on Ash Wednesday, but we mostly think of it as a Roman Catholic uh, service. But I can assure you that uh, it is meaningful and um, effective for all of us in the Christian faith, in the Christian church. However, I will say that our founder, John Wesley, did not uh, hold out much uh, use for Ash Wednesday. He did not include it in the uh, liturgies that he sent over from England for American Methodists, but uh, that does not uh, matter so much. We, uh, the, their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Consecrate the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 
Now we hear a word from the gospel according to Matthew in the sixth chapter. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Lord, on this solemn night, be present and speak to us. Lead us into a season of holiness and go with us step by step. Encourage us, sustain us, fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The author Sarah Miles calls Ash Wednesday the most honest, of days. That is as good a description as any for a day when we come before the altar of the Lord in fear and trembling to have ashes smudged onto our foreheads. There is no denying the fragility of our being, the impermanence of our bodies, the helplessness of our souls. When the gritty soot of burned palm leaves is smeared upon us. Honesty won't leave us alone tonight. To feel the grit of those ashes rubbing against our skin is to remember the dirt and the dust from which we come, and to one day we will return. To smell the burnt residue of smoke and flame wafting up from that little bowl is to recollect our bent for sinning and to know that that sinning comes at a very high price. To look at the soiled faces of our friends or our own when we look in the mirror is to recall the darkness of temptation and to know that that temptation is always on the prowl, even when we are too busy or it is too cunning for us to realize that it is surrounding waiting around corners patiently. We come year after year to this holy day, and as the old pop song goes, sometimes the honesty is too much. We panic in the realization of who we are or what we have become or perhaps what we will never become. We lament missed opportunities or sheepishly try to forget the promises we have made to ourselves or we've made to others, but we have not been able to keep. 
the years roll on, and suddenly it is clear that for most of us, there are far more days stretching out behind us than ones looming ahead of us. Things get tight in such honest moments. Moments in which we are urged to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Facing the honesty required on Ash Wednesday is difficult. It makes us uncomfortable. It leaves us feeling strangely unequipped for this occasion. And so we try to do what so much of the time we do. We try to shift attention from what is really required of us on this, the most honest of days, which begins the most honest of all liturgical seasons. We are a clever species, and we have become adept at changing the subject. So we devise all sorts of strategies and adopt a whole range of little tactics to avoid the honesty demanded in this season. Now, many go to the tried and true, giving something up. And there is nothing wrong with giving up something for Lent. Self-denial is what following Jesus is all about. But our hands... In our hands, we have often turned self-denial into a spiritual Olympics, competing to see who can be the top self-denier, giving up chocolate or coffee or, God forbid, Diet Coke or staying off social media for a few weeks when all around the world there are people who barely see a full meal in front of them in an entire week let alone in a day, or who have no clean water to drink or bathe in and whose cries are not even heard in this age when we have more means to communicate than any other time in all of world history. Most of the world doesn't have the luxury of choosing self-denial. That lifestyle is imposed upon them 365 days of the year, not just these 40, during which we eagerly choose a small portion of suffering for ourselves. Now, some enterprising Christians, and I count myself among them, have sought to reverse all this, and instead we've begun picking up something new for Lent, a new spiritual discipline, a new charitable cause to give to, spending more time in Bible study or serving the church. And here, too, I want to be sure you know there's nothing wrong. In fact, I would encourage us to pick up some new practice, to develop some new habits during Lent. Jesus, after all, teaches his disciples to pray. But this picking up that we often do in Lent, Many times it's simply reserved for this particular season being born tonight. Yes, over the next month or so, we, are, we will be present, we will be attentive. We will have hearts full of promise for the journey. And most of us will make it through these next 40 days with little problem. Our spiritual zeal would be on display. If you've been on Facebook today, you can see people posting their pictures with their ashes on their forehead. They're on display. We'll count off the days, and few will miss attending to those spiritual practices as these somber weeks pass. But then by Easter, we'll be fatigued. Our life becomes again cluttered with requirements and demands, old and new. Our picking up often becomes putting down all over again, but this time for all the wrong reasons. The thing we wanted to become 
on a night like tonight, the practices we believe that would take us there, they fade away. Until next year when we come back again and make promises that many of us will not keep on the long road to perfection. I know, it's enough to make you want to throw up your hands and give up. It is enough to leave us a bit desperate about the future of our souls. It is enough to make us confused and frustrated. It's enough to make many of us feel ashamed and worried. It is enough to make us want to give up on Lent. After all, why bother if there's really no way we can get it right? But beloved, on this, the most honest of all days, in the midst of such despairing feelings, maybe we should feel this way. Perhaps we are right where God wants us to be, in a most bare and vulnerable state on this most honest of days standing in the midst of God's beautiful creation, but realizing with Brother Adam and Sister Eve that we are naked before God's eyes. We are helpless. Our cleverness has come up empty. We need help. And the ashes remind us that we cannot help ourselves, no matter how proudly we may wear them. This day and this season, you see, has very little to do with us. But it has everything to simply being in the presence of Jesus and trusting Him. Lent is not really about what we will do tonight or on Sunday or next week or the next. But it is really about what Christ has already done for us. High on a cross low in a grave, rising again to life and ascending into heaven, one day to return in glory. If it were really about anything else, then we might find ourselves quite too busy to hear Joel offer to us that even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart not your clothing. Talk about honesty. The Lord cuts to the chase every time. Rend our hearts and not our clothing. Offer ourselves and not sacrifices. Commit to walking the long and steady road toward perfection instead of settling for a few short temporary steps. Lay down hate and avarice and jealousy and unchecked ambition. Pick up love and kindness and hospitality and patience. Draw close to God, who does not want us just for these next 40 days, but instead wants us for our entire lives and even beyond it. It is Ash Wednesday. Lent is beginning. Soon we will come forward to receive ashes to be marked for life and death, death and life. So I invite you to come, to come with each faltering and reluctant step, with each worried breath, with fear and trembling in your hearts. Come forward and return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful. Now, friends, I invite you to receive this invitation. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins 
and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance, And as a mark of our mortal nature, we now bow before our Creator and Redeemer. And I invite you in this moment to unburden your heart before God. Whatever is weighing heavy on you, give it to God. Give it to God. Let us silence. name of Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you've created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign of our mortality and repentance, so that you, we may remember that only by your gracious gift we are giving, given everlasting life given through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, you may come forward as you are able and present yourself before the altar of the Lord, and I will impose ashes upon you. As you feel the grit, maybe smell the burn, just remember, From dust you came and to dust you will return. But we are not without hope. Jesus is Lord. God is good. Come forward now as you're able. you came and to dust you shall return.
Friends, in this solemn moment, be at peace. Put your trust in the Lord. Be joyful in His love. Yes, be at peace. Amen. Tonight, as we are reminded of the price of sin, as we are reminded of death, as we are even reminded of our own limitations, we also glory in the graciousness and the generosity of love, of God in His love. You may leave an offering if you are so led as you leave the sanctuary tonight and the plate by the door. You may give, but if you do, give to the glory of God. And know God loves you. Whether you give much or little, or if you give nothing, God loves you tonight. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we do give you thanks for gathering us as your believers and disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us the hope that endures, the strength that never leaves us, and the love that will sustain us tonight, for the rest of our lives, and in the life to come. Tonight, Lord, we give thanks. Amen. And now, as we prepare to go, receive this blessing. May the almighty and merciful God who desires not the death of one sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept our repentance, forgive our sins, and restore us all by the Holy Spirit to the newness of life. Friends, go in peace.